Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome if you are new here. My name is Rebecca and today on this channel, Style My Sweets, I am sharing with you guys my top 20 Dollar Tree DIY home decor pieces from 2020. These are your favorites, my favorites, and if I missed any of your favorites, comment and let me know which one did I miss from this past year. Also, Happy New Year! This video is probably going up either New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. So anyway, I wish you guys all a very happy, happy, blessed New Year. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Let me know which one is your favorite and let's go ahead and get started. For the first one, I'm taking several boxes of the wooden game blocks from Dollar Tree in order to create a tissue box cover. I started by creating four squares of the wooden blocks that are all three blocks high. Two of the squares are eight blocks wide and two are nine blocks wide. I think you'll definitely want to use wood glue for this because super glue soaks in and absorbs into the wood and hot glue will create too much bulk. But if you have a suggestion for another type of glue that would work besides wood glue, definitely let me know. I will have the one that I used linked down below in the description box. I got mine on Amazon and I think it was like under $5 for this bottle. I've been using it for like a year now and I still have a lot left. I then created a top panel for the box, and for this one, it's basically another square that is three vertical blocks high by nine vertical blocks wide. But in the very center row, I only have two blocks on each end, and the five blocks in the very center I left out so that we can actually pull up a tissue easily through here. I love the look of the wood grain and so I thought I was going to use just a gloss spray to finish the wood, kind of seal it, give it a little bit of a shine, but I don't know what was wrong with this stuff, but it was going on like a thin white spray paint. So I just did the one side and I waited to see if hopefully it would dry clear, but nope, it looked exactly the same. And so now I was kind of worrying that I had ruined this whole project until I started trying to sand it off and fix it. And I realized that by sanding off a little bit of it, the lighter tone that was left behind after sanding actually gave it more dimension. And I think it looked really cool. So I went back to do the other sides like this and make them all match. And then the cap of the sprayer on this old can broke like halfway through. So I ended up having to actually get my white spray paint to finish the other side. I just did a really, really light, light coat of white spray paint. And when it was dry, I sanded everything down again, just with a little piece of sandpaper, nothing special. Just sand it until it looks how you want it. And I personally think that this just gives the tissue box a really lovely lighter look where you can still see the wood grain peeking through. And I just think it came out perfect for like that beachy, rustic, farmhouse, coastal themed decor. Definitely let me know what you think of this next one. It was inspired by a vase I saw at Pier 1, and I think my mom would totally love this one. So I am thinking of giving it to her for Mother's Day with flowers in it. So I started by taking this Dollar Tree vase and spray painting it white. And then once it was dry, I took this very light Parisian gray chalk paint, and I just very lightly dry brushed and lightly pressed it on with a circle foam brush. And I just kept applying a little bit more and a little bit more until it was covered the way that I wanted it, going from the bottom right on up to that widest part here on the base right before it tapers back in. And that way the neck part of the bottle will stay white. Again, let this totally dry. And then one sheet should be enough to do this, I think. I took a sheet of these adhesive pearls and I cut long single strips of pearls very neatly. And I'm going to start where the white and the gray meet at the top, bringing the string of pearl stickers halfway down around the vase and down to the bottom on the opposite side. And then to give myself a guide, I started back at the top part and connected another string of pearls from the top and went down the other direction to connect 
this string of pearls to the other one at the bottom. I hope this makes sense as you watch what I'm doing on here. It's really hard to explain, but I continued going around the base, making the diagonal lines as well as filling in the spaces with a pattern of pearl dots. The top triangle pieces have five pearls along that straight line and then a row of three and then one more pointed down. So it kind of makes like a little triangle. And I did four rows of four pearls somewhat diagonally to create a bit of like a diamond shaped square here diagonally inside each little maybe section around the base. Maybe hold your hand a little while. Somehow I know you're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own. We ride around in style, sleeves rolled up, glasses on. And then you make that smile when my heart starts racing when I'm with you. And here is how it turned out. So let me know what you think. The next one was really easy and turned out so pretty, I think. I took a set of four old coasters that I had from Dollar Tree and I covered them with two coats of white chalk paint. And once they're dry, I took my black Sharpie paint pen, which I will have it linked below for you. I always link everything that I can. And if I ever forget, just tell me and I will go back and get the link for you. Anyway, I used a ruler and I actually got this one in Dollar Tree after going several years without a ruler. How crazy is that, right? But now I have one. Yay! <laughs> you can honestly use anything straight, even like a piece of cardboard from your recycle, anything like that. Just try to get two straight diagonal lines from corner to corner intersecting in the middle like this. And then we are basically creating two more angles inside each triangle that we've just made here. It worked pretty well to line the ruler up about a quarter to a half inch off of the other lines, but still in line with and parallel to that line. And then draw a line from the outside edge in toward the center, stopping below the point of the angle above it. It's really hard to explain, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Honestly, you can create whatever pattern of lines that you want, or you could even screenshot a picture of this coaster and then just use that to look at and copy. I've been using these for my hot coffee mugs and they are great, but for glasses of cold beverages that might create a lot of moisture, I would suggest adding a clear coat of some spray or Mod Podge, something to give them a more waterproof seal. Moving on, the next one is a tall planter vase and I'm taking two of these waste baskets from Dollar Tree and putting the widest parts at the tops together with some hot glue and then taking two of these smaller matching baskets. I've got one going upside down underneath and one going right side up, up on the top. Everything is hot glued together and don't worry if you're if it doesn't stay like 100% together. We are going to start at the bottom and cover this entire thing in rope, gluing it on as you go. I always call this stuff nautical rope, but I think the term for this one is something else actually. It's a little bit different than nautical rope, but any rope you want to use should work for this. So I will have the one that I used linked down below if you want to check it out. I love that you can get it in a super large quantity because it is just much more cost effective that way and it ensures that your whole project can be finished in a single piece of rope which just makes it look neater than when you have a lot of ends and seams. The top part I also painted over with some black chalk paint in order to kind of look like the picture here from Anthropology. Let everyone know if you have ideas for what we could use to create that super long narrow top that the Anthropology one has. You guys are probably wondering why I didn't do that part of this DIY and I was looking in Dollar Tree. They do have some different things we could probably use but personally I like the look of this better I felt like that long narrow top looks like I don't know it just kind of reminded me of a floppy elephant trunk or something like a long elephant nose so I honestly didn't like that so I decided to just leave mine like this but definitely if you have an idea what to use or share your ideas in the comments below I would love to know everyone's suggestions I was going through my craft supply stash 
brush and I started by taking this little wall decor sign from Dollar Tree and I'm also taking four wooden dowels. I got a whole package of these in Dollar Tree's craft section and I hot glued them into the corners standing straight up and once the glue was dry I added another dot of hot glue on top of each stick and placed this clear plastic dish from Dollar Tree upside down on top of the sticks with the sticks going up into the corners of the dish. I let that dry another minute and then I very, very carefully turned the whole thing over and added more hot glue into each corner of the clear plastic dish to really give the sticks a good hold, especially because we're going to make this the top part and paint over the whole thing. So this underside won't be visible anyway. I also took a small wooden dowel, again, from a pack that I got in Dollar Tree as well, and I'm just gonna cut two little pieces about one inch long and then sand the ends to smooth them out a bit and then I just arranged them to make a handle and used a small bit of hot glue to attach everything together. And now you can paint this all one color, spray paint it, chalk paint it, whatever you like. I decided to spray paint the areas I wanted to make gold with a gold spray paint first and then come back with black chalk paint and a foam brush and carefully paint all of the areas black now that I wanted to finish it up and make black. Whenever I'm with you, I am alright. There's something about the way you make me feel inside. I'm counting down the days till we fly away. This is how it turned out. I love the black and gold, but I also think that this would be really beautiful just painted something totally neutral like all white for summer or even doing it in gray or brown as well. Of course, I always recommend using LED candles for safety, especially with this one because the top is covered and I will have my favorite ones that I'm using here linked below. Anyway, moving on to the next one, I was inspired by this piece from Anthropology, and I decided to neatly cut the material from this Dollar Tree pillow. I showed you guys these pillows back in one of my Dollar Tree hauls, or maybe on Instagram. I'm at Style My Sweets. If you're not following me there, you totally should, because I share more DIY pictures, behind the scenes, bonus shop with me hauls, and inspiration, and it's so much fun. But I am cutting and gluing this material around a Dollar Tree vase. I'm using a seven and a half inch one, but you know what? I think there's enough material to cover a nine inch one if you want to make it taller. Neatly trim the edges and then I am sponging on this metallic chalk paint. I just feel like this paint color looks exactly like the leather color in the photo of the anthropology one. Of course, you could do a black one as well if you want in order to make the set like you see in their picture. I will have the chalk paints and everything I use linked down below for you guys. The only thing I wish I did differently on this one would be to paint the back side of the material before attaching it to the glass because you can see the light backing of the material when you look down inside the vase. Although I'm placing my little cactus in here and it fills in the top perfectly so you can't even tell. For the base though, there's a couple ways to do this. First of all, the darker colored wooden game blocks are the perfect color, so I recommend using those if you have any. And if you made the candle holder risers from my last DIY video, you probably ended up with some of these left over, so this will be perfect. You can use whatever glue you want, but I recommend wood glue. I'll link it below. It's pretty cheap and totally worth having on hand. So I ended up positioning the blocks with one on the ends so they would be as low as possible since the anthropology ones are pretty small. But let me know if you think it looks better overall with the style holder that I created here with these brown blocks or the way it looks on one I did previously with these blocks that I painted black, which by the way, I did this one for a Pottery Barn inspired DIYs video. I'll have that linked at the end of this video as well as down in the description box. I'm taking two of these woven rugs that I found in Dollar Tree. You could actually do this with placemats as well. These are just a little bit larger than a placemat, but totally up to you. I think a few placemats that are similar style would also work. So what I'm going to do is actually take 
two of them and I'm going to cut the end off right by the fringe. Basically just very neatly cut that row of fringe off and then I am just trying to line these up as neatly as I can. And you could sew this if you want to, but I am actually just using like a tiny bit of hot glue right carefully in there along the seam and connecting the two pieces to make a table runner. This was super easy. I think it looks really kind of boho chic, very neutral, and could also work with even like a farmhouse style decor. The tassel fringe on the end is really nice. The colors are so basic and neutral and could really go with any decor. So I am really happy with how this turned out. I'm not sure if I like it better on the dining room table or on my coffee table, but either way, I think it is super pretty. Okay, so this is like my favorite one and I have a door. Now, before you're like, Rebecca, Dollar Tree does not sell doors. Okay, so my dad had actually got this one. It was being thrown away and he brought it home. And so I thought it would be perfect for my project. Now, what we're gonna do is be gluing mirrors onto the front. You can buy a door like this for, I think around $30 in like a Home Depot or Lowe's, but I also looked online and found people selling doors like this. And I found some in my area that were only five or $10 for a door. The other alternative is you might be able to use a piece of sheetrock, although you definitely want to keep that in the house if you use sheetrock, or some kind of plywood, and that would be fine too. You can keep plywood outside, you can paint the back, which is what I recommend for the door, is that if you're going to do this outside, definitely just paint any areas of the wood that's going to be exposed, or maybe paint just the entire thing before you glue your mirrors on, just so that the wood is protected outdoors. So I am going to keep mine inside because our deck is like a second story deck and this is very tall and we get so much wind. So I'm, we're just not comfortable. Like this might blow over. What if it tips over and falls off the deck? But if you don't have a ton of wind where you're up on a second story and you want to just like, you know, first story, lean it against the house or something like there's nowhere for it to fall, then, you know, I think this would be so, so nice outside. But for me, we actually thought that in our living room, there's pretty high ceilings in the living room and this is going to be the perfect thing make kind of a row across the bottom, get the mirrors straight, and then also make a full column going all the way up the door so that I know that I line my mirrors up um, in line with the door along one side. You know, I started on the left side and then I'm going to work left to right. By the time I get to like the top, I won't have my mirrors all going off in the wrong direction, kind of crooked. Does that make sense? So I'm giving myself a little bit of a frame to work with here, and I am using a combination of both wood glue and hot glue for this. Um, if you don't have wood glue, maybe you can use super glue or something like that. Um, but what I did was I did two sides with hot glue, and then I did two sides with wood glue, and I did it on the edges of the frame so that that could really connect to the door. I also had a little bit of a tricky time finding mirrors that all matched because believe it or not, the ones that all look like they matched, I had gotten enough in Dollar Tree and I got home to line them up and realized that they were actually a quarter of an inch off. So it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is going to be a big deal when you're lining up this many mirrors by the time you get to the end of your row, you know, they're going to be way out of line. So I had to end up kind of returning those, still looking and measuring them more carefully to make sure that, you know, you can use whichever ones you want, just get the ones that are all the same size. That's the only thing that matters. Also, you can order your mirrors online. Um, the only thing to know with that is that if you order online, you might not be able to find them all with one color frame. What I found online gave you a combination of black frames, white frames, and silver frames, which, you know, black, white, and silver would be really pretty. It would give you a really cool, really unique, customized, personalized, eclectic mirror. But, you know, if you want it to be like all one color, then you may have to look in the store or you could always paint your frames because maybe you want like a pink mirror and you're gonna paint them all pink anyway and then it wouldn't matter. And I just, I love how mirrors look outside. But like I said, this mirror is so, so tall. 
So I decided what I wanted to do was actually stick it in the corner of our living room to reflect the light, to reflect the space in the living room. I think it looks so good. I love how big this 18 inch wreath frame is and it was just a dollar at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take about seven bundles of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and cover this wreath frame. I did use glue in between the ropes, but only on the back side of the wreath. So the front part would have a nice, neat, clean look. Next, I'm going to take one of these hanging wall art signs from Dollar Tree that says Hope, and I just used a good amount of hot glue to glue the little knot hanger into the back of the wreath in between the nautical ropes. And then I took a bit of Dollar Tree burlap ribbon and I layered this white ribbon from Target's Dollar Spot. This was just a dollar. And then a piece of this more decorative little ribbon also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut the pieces long enough to kind of fold over around itself to make a loop and have a portion hanging down. I cut another portion of the rope, another set of these three pieces to create another loop and have the end hanging down the opposite way as well. And then I kind of took a little extra end from the first loop and kind of wrapped it around the second loop in the center to create like this little center piece here. And I glued everything in place to make this look like a bow, but this was just my lazy little shortcut, but it was really easy to do. Even with three layers of ribbon on here, I think it turned out really cute. I did go in and angle the edges a little bit and then I added some Dollar Tree greenery in behind the bow and that's about it. I was a little bit undecided if I should add some little flowers, maybe in red or white or pink, something to coordinate with like a certain summer color theme, but I feel like the rustic farmhouse look of this is just gonna work perfectly on the log cabin door out on the farm, and I think I just wanna leave it neutral just with some greenery. But comment and let me know what color you think would go well with this if we did want to add a color and add some flowers. I could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely. We could be gazing at the stars, but now it feels just like I wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me. I never gave the key to you, even though I wanted to. Next, I took this rug from Dollar Tree and my mom is always worried about having pillows out on the porch because there is so much pollen and so much dust. They have like a dirt slash gravel driveway. Also the horses out in the riding arena, it stirs up a lot of dust. And so just with like the dirt, dust, pollen and all of that in the air, my mom is always feeling like the porch gets too much dust on it and too much pollen and she really doesn't want anything expensive or anything that's going to be like too difficult to clean because she just feels like it's going to get dirty really quick so i hope she's going to like this little pillow i think this turns out super cute all i did was cut the little edges with the tassels off and then i fold the rug in half place the little tassel pieces in between the folded seam edges of the rug and i just used hot glue to seal up the edge and hold it together i'm sure some people would rather use fabric glue or actually just sew it together and make it official and if you want to by all means that will be an even better way to make this but again I didn't have the time or the patience for that today and we're literally just making a one dollar pillow so I am not too worried the hot glue has held this together fine so far and I'm really happy with it so once the sides were glued together with the tassels in between them you can take some leftover plastic shopping bags and stuff the pillow for an easy free filler perfect for the outdoors i say free but actually connecticut has started charging 10 cents per bag this year so i'm curious now do you have to pay for grocery bags where you are because we usually bring our reusable bags but if you do have leftover ones they will make a great filler for some outdoor pillows i didn't overstuff the pillow because nobody's gonna be like sleeping on this or anything it's just to hold the shape and just kind of create a cute little accent pillow for decoration now i took 
took these edges where I had cut the tassel trim off of and I am going to fold and tuck them inside and glue them together again just to create like a nice seam and a nice edge here with a tight seam to hold it all together and this is how it turned out. Okay, so for the next one, don't laugh, but we're starting with a container of Play-Doh. I got this in Dollar Tree, but you can get it anywhere or maybe even use up some of your kids Play-Doh. Color doesn't matter. So if they've already mixed all the colors together, it's totally okay. We're gonna be painting over this. So now you have a use for it. We're gonna make tons of tiny balls. And when I say tiny, I mean tiny. I thought I was making them small at first and I ended up going back to make them even smaller because then we're going to take four little balls and make a little square out of them or like a north, south, east and west layout. Take your pinky finger and just push from the center out and flatten each little ball into a tiny flower petal. I also really like the flower petal shape that you get when you use your palm to help cup the flower and round the petals up a little bit like this in your hand. I let these all dry overnight and then came back and flipped them over so that the other side could fully dry out as well. And then I'm taking this vase from Dollar Tree and gluing them along the top. Now on the first one, I forgot that the anthropology one actually dips down. So for this other Dollar Tree vase, I glued the flowers on so that they kind of cascade up and down around the top half of the vase, more like the look of the anthropology one. And then I just sprayed the entire thing white with some white spray paint, let that dry, and then you could be done now if you like the way this looks, or you could come back with some light brown paint to create more of the effect that the anthropology one had. The closest color I had for this is this chalk paint. It's kind of a grayish tan color in the color castle. And I just brushed that over the edges of the flowers, all around like the edges along the tops and some of the ridges. And then I just let everything dry and there you go. We could definitely put flowers or something in here, but I totally love the look just like this, just as a beautiful piece of decor that you can set somewhere in your home, in your room. This just looks so pretty and so classy. So the DIY that I have to share with you is going to be this stand riser. I am taking a glass candle holder from Dollar Tree along with one of these plastic um, wider plant dishes. I am just attaching them with hot glue and then I'm going to be painting over it with some chalk paint. I actually really like this copper colored one. I got it on Amazon and I will have it linked down below. The folk art brand that Amazon has is really nice. I honestly feel like it has very little smell to it and dries super quickly. I'm just really impressed with it overall and always really happy with these paints when I get them. They are a little bit pricier I think than the ones that you can get from Walmart. Although me personally I find that the ones from Walmart seem to have a stronger smell. Um, I don't know if that's just me, but for that reason, I do kind of prefer these ones that I have ordered on Amazon. And I just decorated the top edge of this with uh, two rows of these sticker sheets from Dollar Tree. You can just literally peel them off and stick them on and it gives it such a beautiful shiny beaded finished edge. I think this turned out lovely. Anyway, moving on, I absolutely love this one. I think Anthropology also sells something like this, but I was shopping at Urban Outfitters and I was just very inspired by the pattern of this wall art. So I took some of these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart and cut the ends off. Anyway, I grabbed some metallic copper chalk paint and painted the wood. And then once it was dry, I arranged the pieces in a pattern similar to the one from Urban Outfitters and I just glued them onto an 11 by 14 canvas, also from Dollar Tree. I was super excited when I found these at Dollar Tree and I bought a whole bunch of them. And keep in mind that you can always shop Dollar Tree's website and you can order directly to your home and get free shipping for 
in-store pickup. This is my favorite way to get certain items that they don't have in the store or when I'm trying to get a larger quantity. By the way, this video is not sponsored, but I am going to link Top Cash back down below. It's free to sign up. When you use my link down below, they give you cash back for your online shopping, including at Dollar Tree for a purchase you were planning to make anyway. Sorry, this sounds like an ad. It's totally not. I just highly recommend it. So anyway, this is what it looks like now all framed and I absolutely love how cool this looks using the 11 by 14 frame. Next, I had this idea to create handles from a Dollar Tree napkin ring and I tried to cut it directly in half, which worked okay. But then the handles were a little bit wide for this vase and they looked kind of funny sticking off. So I decided to now try to cut those little half circle pieces up the center to make two pieces out of each one. And that was definitely trickier to do. Be really careful, maybe wear some safety goggles or something in case the plastic cracks or shatters. This did not work out as well as I hoped, but I still managed to create something I liked. So I'm going to share it with you. So one piece broke in two spots and I ended up using the tiniest bit of hot glue just to attach those pieces of the handle back together. I only had one single um, Dollar Tree napkin ring, so I literally had to make this one work even once it cracked. I painted the whole thing over with my metallic copper chalk paint, which I've used it for so many pieces in this video because this color just really makes me happy right now. And here is how it turned out. Obviously the handles are for decoration only and my vase is slightly larger than the Urban Outfitters vase is, but I think this little urn still looks pretty cute. The handles did have a couple little cracks like I mentioned, but I mean, I don't know, that kind of just gives it like a more chipped ceramic or like a realistic pottery appearance and maybe makes it look more vintage or more realistic. Now on to the next one. This could be either a vase or a candle holder or whatever you like, but I started by cleaning the surface of my Dollar Tree vase and then cutting a piece out of this Dollar Tree shower mat. I lined it up where I felt like it had the neatest edge and cut along that and then pulled it tightly around the vase. It does have like a little bit of stickiness to kind of give it some cling and adhere to the glass a little bit. And then that way we can just use some hot glue underneath the edges right along the seam where you attach the two ends together. Um, I am liking the look of this so far, but I wanted to elevate it somehow. And I happen to have some of the wooden tumbling tower game blocks from Dollar Tree as well. So I lined those up as neatly as I could in a circle to fit under the vase almost perfectly, exactly how I wanted them. And I just thought that I would do this the quick and lazy way rather than trying to glue in between each single wood block, which you could totally do if you want to, but I got my blocks in the position exactly where I wanted them and then I just carefully added a decent amount of hot glue all the way around the top placed my vase again super carefully I pressed it down and held it on there and then this has stayed together and it I think I think it worked out really really well it stayed together totally fine for me and it saved me so much time and it held the little wooden blocks in place really well and you might already have this but I just bought this antiquing wax on Amazon and wow I love it I don't even know why it took me so long to get some and try it but it is so nice for coloring the wood and still leaving a little bit of the wood green texture and a little bit of that look of the natural wood coming through almost more of like a stain than a paint so I'm gonna have this linked below if you're interested I really liked using it and I can't wait to create future projects with this and so for the first piece I wanted to create a large piece of wall decor for the living room and the wall is pretty big so as large as the last piece of wall art that I made last week was if you guys saw my last Pottery Barn inspired DIY video I'll link that if you missed it but anyway as big as that wall art was I wanted something even a little bit larger Larger for this wall or a little bit different shape or something so I ended up moving that one to the hallway and creating this piece inspired by this metal wall sculpture 
from Pottery Barn. I took the two and a half packs of popsicle sticks that I already had laying around the house, although to be honest, three full packs should be perfect for this DIY. And basically I'm just overlapping and connecting the popsicle sticks to create interlocking connected squares. Hot glue would probably work fine, but I am using wood glue since I have it. You don't really need a pattern to this, just do it however looks good to you, except when you get to the edges, I think it helps to have somewhat of a pattern a little bit so that one side doesn't look way different from the other side. I wanted them to be random, but still keep an element of symmetry, if that makes sense. And like I said, I only had a little over two packs. Three would have been perfect, but since I was a little short, I grabbed a couple of the larger popsicle sticks that I had laying around, and I cut about half to three quarters of an inch off of the ends of those, and then I cut them down the center in order to create two long pieces that resemble something the size of the regular size popsicle sticks. And I was able to make a couple extra squares this way just in order to finish up my artwork. Once the glue is dry, I did think about painting this in black, but I opted for a hammered brown spray paint instead that I already had. And this is how it looks over here in this corner of the living room. This piece is about three feet tall by three feet wide. So it is a pretty good size. So honestly, a three foot by three foot piece of art like 36 inches wide and only for three dollars the pottery barn one is wider I think it's like 50 or 60 inches but if you got an extra pack of popsicle sticks for like an extra dollar you could easily make this to be four or five feet wide and make it more of the size that the pottery barn one is selling if you wanted to so I need your help do you think this is a good size proportionately on this wall or do you think that I should make it larger once I'm able to get more popsicle sticks should I make it longer and make it four or five feet wide instead of only three feet wide? What would you do? The next one is super easy and something I bought this wood contact paper a long time ago in Dollar Tree in order to make, and I just never got around to it. But basically, I just cut a neat piece of the wood print contact paper, maybe about three inches high or so, long enough to wrap around this vase from Dollar Tree. And that's all there is to this easy DIY candle holder that I was inspired to make by this similar style one that Pottery Barn sells. So if you notice on the top of the Pottery Barn one, the glass is actually kind of a milky white color. So what I decided to do was sponge on a little bit of Mod Podge and make a layer of that on there. It does dry clear, but it gives you that um, kind of like hazy effect on the glass. If you did want it to be a little bit more white, you could probably try mixing in like just a little dot of white paint in with your Mod Podge and doing it that way. Let me know what you guys think and if you would add the white paint or leave it clear glass or just do it with the Mod Podge like I did here. I added one of my favorite LED candles down inside, or you can do a real candle, totally up to you. For the next one, I took both a seven inch vase and a nine inch vase, and I filled them about two to three inches high, a few inches high, whatever looks good to you, with river rocks, which you can get a whole bag of in Dollar Tree, or you can collect some rocks from the great outdoors and make this even more personal and less expensive. Dollar Tree also sells these little tea light holders in a pack of two. I'm just placing one down inside each vase on top of the rocks and adding a candle. I think this would be beautiful anywhere in my home, but it really gives me just a peaceful, relaxing spa vibe. And I think it would be so beautiful in a bathroom or a powder room for sure. I think this one was actually my mother-in-law's favorite DIY out of all the ones I did today. Okay, so for the next one, 
one, I was inspired by these beautiful apothecary jars from Pottery Barn, which were a bit pricey. So for today, I decided to just see what I could create out of my Dollar Tree vases and jars. I used hot glue to attach this Dollar Tree tea light holder upside down, although E6000 will definitely give you a much stronger hold if you prefer. But hey, sometimes I come back months later and I just want to take stuff apart and make something else and repurpose and reuse. And I am taking the top from this glass jar, prying off that plastic seal part. I used a knife and just pried this off really carefully so that the lid will fit perfectly into the vase, the top of the vase. And then I'm taking this similar style Dollar Tree vase. It's a little bit different shape. The opening is narrower for this one. So I actually left the plastic edge right on there. And then this can sit neatly over the opening of the vase. And then one more small Dollar Tree glass jar here. I just left this natural just as is, and this gave me the three different heights. They aren't perfect, but it was a super cheap and super easy way to get some pretty glass jars for our bathroom essentials like Q-tips and bath Epsom salts and even cotton balls. The next one I actually did a DIY of last year, and let's just say it was a very controversial piece. So I am gonna link that video Video. If you want to check out another Dollar Tree Supplies way to DIY this candle holder and you want to see what I'm talking about, I'm going to link that video. But I knew I had to reinvent it as soon as I saw this two pack of orange plastic in the toy section at Dollar Tree. I am not really sure what this was even for, but for all of my intents and purposes, we are making a candle holder. So I glued this to the bottom of a Dollar Tree glass vase and then taped off the whole middle section. We want that to stay clear so I can spray paint the whole thing gold. And then we peel off the tape. The middle part will still be clear. Of course, make sure that you stuff something down inside while you're painting or cover the top or something like that so that paint isn't overflowing and spraying down into the inside of your vase. Anyway, that's about a $2 candle holder inspired by this beautiful Pottery Barn one. I did come back and try cutting along the bottom edge so the base didn't stick out quite as far. I took some scissors and just cut neatly along the line here and as you can see it detached from the vase because I only had that thin line of glue but if you go ahead and cut it out very neatly along the line halfway up you can also go ahead and put this back on underneath your vase and then do a bunch of hot glue on the inside part of the circle connecting the plastic to the glass. I redid it this way. It is so much more sturdy, so definitely go this route. It gives you a way better hold and you can put the glue on there pretty thick. And then I actually taped it off again so that I could go back since a little bit of the paint had gotten messed up. I wanted to go back and just add a second coat to really make sure that the whole thing was gold. And I am so happy with how this turned out. I think it looks really good and even closer now to how the Pottery Barn one looks. But let me know if you like this idea or if you have seen the way that I did it the last time when I did this one last year a different way. Which way did you like it better? And if you haven't seen that video, like I said, I'm going to link it down below. So now for the last one, I spray painted a Dollar Tree vase black, and then I took a loaded paintbrush with white paint and I tapped it all over the vase. I didn't actually touch the vase, but I just tapped the paintbrush and let the paint fall onto the vase and fall where it may. Acrylic paint should work as well as chalk paint. My chalk paint bottle is pretty old and it was actually kind of thick and gloppy, but I do appreciate that the thick drips of paint you're basically throwing onto your vase will dry a bit quicker and drip a bit less when you use chalk paint instead of acrylic paint. So totally up to you, but just keep that in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed these top 20 Dollar Tree DIY home decor pieces on my channel from 2020. Please comment and let me know which one was your favorite. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Also, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I would love to have you and click that little notification bell so you will be notified every time I upload a new video. And with all of that being said, I wish you a beautiful and blessed day. Happy New Year again, and I will see you guys soon in the next one. Bye!